Okay, well, this is BTEC Level 3 Engineering Unit 9, Work Experience, and I'm, uh, I'm going to jump straight into P1. P1 says, explain how work experience can support the development of own personal skills and personal attributes for work in engineering. I think, generally speaking, before you start detailing anything or explaining anything, you need to define things so it's very clear, very obvious, very explicit what you're going to be speaking about. So the very first thing, let me zoom in. The very first thing I have on my list here is what is work experience? Now, many of you guys are going to have some vague definition of what it is or what it actually means. Go and Google it. So it's, let me just put that here, Google it. It's perfectly fine to go and research what this means. I always say never copy. You're supposed to read, understand, uh, rewrite it in your own words and still reference what you've rewritten, okay? So never, ever, ever copy anything. So again, what is work experience? Give a brief definition. Work experience is the act of doing this thing, right? And then you find a reference for it online. So whichever website you found it on, you put the link in the document in some place that works for you and your teacher. That's it. Then I would go into the types of work experience. Work experience is not a, a single activity. There are different types of activities around work experience. Some people do paid work experience. Some people do internships. Some people do on-the-job work experience. Some people do um, summer, in I already mentioned internship, but work experience are different kinds, okay? So simply look at types of work experience. And again, let me just open this quickly. Types of work experience. It doesn't have to be a single kind. Here, you're going to want to mention, I would say about three or four should be fine. And here we have a, a nice list of eight. Eight, that's a massive amount. But again, these are the types of work experience. And that's what I would do. So the very first thing you would have in your document, let me just go back to my Word document, is what is work experience? You give a nice sentence or two definition on what that is. Um, let me just remove this. And immediately under that, you're going to have the types of work experience. Again, you list maybe three, four, five different types of work experience. And then you simply say, why is work experience useful? Give a very, very simple example of why you think it's useful. Uh, I think personally, the main reason why work experience might be useful is down to the fact that you get real world hands-on experience in most cases. Being in a classroom, for example, for engineering, you're going to be in a relatively restricted environment where you keep soldering or, or, or um, welding the same types of things. Whereas in a work experience, a, a client might come into your company and say, I want this specific thing welded in this way by this time using these materials that you might have never come across in a lab at college or school before. So how is it going to be useful for you to be in an environment where you're, where you're getting hands-on experience? That's all it's asking. But again, be very vague here because later on, you're gonna go into more detail. Now, the next thing we need to speak about are professional skills, which I've put here, let me put that in bold, and you're gonna to need to speak about personal attributes as well. But again, before speaking about professional skills or personal attributes, define the term personal skills. So again, let me show you guys how to cheat. Uh, what are, oh, excuse me, what are personal skills, let's say, right? And again, you're going to have a list. You're, you're going to have a list of things that you can use. Not one website is going to have everything. Maybe you, you go over a few websites. Why is this not loading? There we go. You find a few professional skills. And then from there, you speak about each one of them. So not only do you list them, you explain what the skill actually means. So let me choose the very first one I can see. Uh, critical thinking. What is critical thinking? I think in... Critical thinking and problem solving probably come hand in hand. So what is critical thinking? Critical thinking is the process of thinking systematically, thinking in a logical way to try and solve the problem, thinking within the realms of possibility for that project. Yes, you know how to weld, but does this project even need welding? Probably not. It probably needs soldering and circuit design, so stick to those and don't go out of the realms of possibility for this specific task. So critical thinking, problem solving, okay? Um, and not only do you um, explain what it is, discuss how this can be improved by work experience. Again, let's imagine you're in a company and they give you some project. You need to think about how you're going to solve that project. It's going to be slightly different from when you're in school, when you're given a step-by-step -step guide on how you can do similar things. You're, you're going to have to sit there as a critical thinker 
and look at the information that's been provided to you either by the client or by your manager or by your boss and then sit down and critically think and analyze and learn how to solve that specific problem. So that's how work experience is going to help you. You're going to, hand, you're going to have sorry, hands-on, real-world experience on how to solve specific problems brought to you by customers because not every problem is going to be the same. I might want, I don't know, um, gold welded or bonded to steel, which is then bonded to silver, which is then bonded to adamantium, whatever the case is, you're going to have to think critically on how this can be done in the real world. Whereas in a lab at school, again, you're given these things step by step. So that's how you would do that. Um, so that's for skill one. You do exactly the same thing for skill two, skill three, and skill four. I think if you're going for a distinction, you shouldn't have anything less than about three, four, or five skills. And then for personal attributes, it's going to be more or less the same thing. So attribute one, explain what this attribute actually means. So let's look for personal attributes, because I don't know what personal attributes mean. Let's just say personal attributes. And then it's going to give us a list. One second, it's still loading for some reason. Still loading again. All right, personal attributes. So being honest, having a good sense of humor, or being dependable. I think being dependable there is probably the main one when thinking about work experience. So let's go with that one. What does it mean to be dependable? People can depend on you. When something is asked of you, you can present the information you have if you have any. When you say you're going to do something, you actually do what you say you're going to do. So explain what it means and then simply discuss how this can be improved by work experience. If you're a dependable person, if you're working for a company within a company with other people, what's going to happen? You have to be dependable. People have to be able to come to you, either your, your colleagues, your boss, your manager, they have to be able to come to you and say, can you get X thing done in X time? And if you're, if you're a dependable person to some degree, you, you can say yes or no. And if, let's say, it's going to be two weeks, you need to say, yes, I can get this done in two weeks, and I can get this done in two weeks because everything seems as if it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't really matter why. It's simply, how can work experience improve this? You're, you're going to be forced to be in a team with other people. And if you are a dependable person, work experience will improve on this skill. You will see the benefits of being a dependable person within a team. If you're in a team with someone and you're not pulling your weight, the entire team gets dragged down. Let's say you're doing the welding, someone else is doing soldering, someone else is doing circuit design, someone else is programming. But every single person in that team has to work together. So you being forced to be in a team forces some form of dependency. So you depend on other people, other people depend on you, and that's how we get that done. So this is how I would approach P1. And again, P1 is explain how work experience can support the development of own personal skills and personal attributes. So again, we explain the personal skill. So skill one, explain what this means. And then we also explain how work experience can improve or help us improve that personal skill or that professional skill, sorry. And the same thing for attributes. We say what the attribute is. Uh, we explain what the attribute actually means. So again, I think the one I mentioned was... Um, uh, being dependable. What does being dependable actually mean? I might have to hand this assignment to someone who has no idea what these engineering terms mean. Now, fine, these words are pretty um, descriptive or pretty simple for most people to understand, but that's not the point. Still define it so it's very, very specific what you're speaking about when you do speak about it. So um, being dependable, explain what that means, and then discuss how this can be improved by work experience. You have, you're going to be forced to work with other people. You're going to depend on them. They're going to depend on you. This is how I would approach P1. So hopefully that was useful. Um, yeah, all right.